yesterday was uh, yes uh, good morning students are you able to listen to me yes sir yes sir good morning yes sir good morning sir good morning okay and are you able to uh, see the powerpoint presentation also yes sir 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 okay thank you thank you so i said uh, today we may have little less attendance and uh, because uh, uh, yesterday also was festival so happy onam to all of you who whoever had celebrated yesterday uh, onam and uh, today is raksha bandhan so again happy raksha bandhan to uh, all of you because uh, uh, all over india this raksha bandhan day is celebrated it is actually tyawar of uh, uh, sisters and brothers so uh, there is no a uh, region uh, language or your uh, religion uh, coming into way so it is a festival for the brothers and sisters but uh, of course if it is celebrated as english festival as brothers day or sisters day then we celebrate it more and if we say raksha bandhan then it becomes oh it's indian so we did not have such a feeling and we should have this raksha bandhan celebrated all over world okay so anyway so with this uh, starting note uh, last time we left uh, halfway the maritime administration and to little do recap on the subject <clears throat> each maritime country and when we say maritime country means the countries which are connected to sea oceans rivers and which are having merchant navy so those countries are called as maritime nations so each maritime nation must have a maritime administrator so maritime administrator because this is a international field and that is why such heavy words are required to be used otherwise we are not using any these type of words when we are saying rto we don't say such uh, you know uh, it is a uh, uh, road rule administrator or vehicular traffic administrator that way we don't use those words we just say rto because it's a local thing local thing or it is national thing but when it becomes international we have to use that word maritime administrator and maritime administrator in india we have seen it is director general of shipping and such different different names will be there with each country but maritime administrator is a common term which is used all over but offices may be known by different different uh, names like uh, just to give you example in uh, uh, usa america uh, they are using coast guard coast guard is maritime administrator okay in uh, uh, uk they call it as mca okay so so these are different different names some of the countries are still calling it as a dg shipping or maybe mercantile marine department or uh, mca coast guard different different names are there in germany they call water police so different different names are there but uh, role is uh, same same okay so this maritime administrator what is their main role is we have seen that <coughs> they have to control they have to make rules regulations legislations for the merchant navy they have to develop merchant navy they have to solve the problems of merchant navy they have to uh, uh, give promote the trade export import trade through merchant navy they have to develop ports and control ports as well which are used by merchant navy they have to inspect the ships which are 
registered outside their country and coming into their country like foreign ships which are coming into their country they have to inspect them they have to do registration of the ships they have to ensure that these registered ships with them they must use they must comply with all the international as well as national regulations they have to also represent the country with international maritime organizations or the international forum so like dg shipping will be representing india at imo meetings whenever they will take place they will also send on deputation some officers to imo's various committees and those committees we have seen imo is having five committees msc maritime safety committee mepc maritime environment protection committee legal committee facilitation committee and so on okay so this maritime administrator plays a major role in control of merchant navy in the country safety of the ships safety of the people employment of the seafarers training of the seafarers legislations coming be bringing into force then enforcing these laws development of shipping development of ports controlling of ports all such type of thing they have to look after and further we have seen in the history of indian maritime administrator he is from british era and britishers uh, as they had rules in uk similar rules or in same lines rules were applied in india also and in 1929 they established mercantile marine department offices across the many ports in india and those are starting from karachi and mumbai and uh, chennai kolkata rangoon so all these places mercantile marine department offices were opened now after the britishers left the rangoon has became pa become part of the myanmar different country altogether and karachi is another different country pakistan and now remaining whatever we had that is your mumbai chennai and calcutta so all those names also have changed from bombay to mumbai chennai uh, madras to chennai and Kol uh, kolkata to kolkata okay so all these mercantile marine department offices and the officer in charge appointed there as principal officer po and the in short form it is famous be known as po mmd so those offices are also there same offices are there we are using which were established by britishers in same building same location and many places even furniture also is same and po mmd the in charge person is also name is also known with same name so what dg shipping or maritime administration uh, administrators responsibility role and responsibility is there that is also to be fulfilled by po mmd in various ports as this po mmd is a branch offices of dg shipping dg shipping headquarters are in mumbai okay with this uh, little recap on the subject we will proceed ahead with uh, some roles and responsibility of po mmd okay principal officers mercantile marine department okay so they will be doing registrations of ships certificates of officers passenger ships safety collision accidents investigation navigation preventive prevention of pollution investigation and inquiries and they get powers under mercantile marine 
no merchant shipping act merchant shipping act is famously known as merchant shipping act 1958 okay so let us proceed further so they will be doing further tonnage measurement crew accommodation partly we have discussed this slide already i don't want to spend a lot of time because we are running against uh, time you know uh, so that we can complete all the syllabus in seven lectures so survey of the ships also they will be doing load line inspections they will be doing and there is into shipping casualties and wrecks uh, so that we have seen holding of examination of certificate of competency these are certificates given to the mariners to operate the ships so seafarers so seafarers examinations also they will be conducting survey of passenger ships as i mentioned earlier each passenger ship sails out from a port every time and all the time it has to be surveyed for safety safety of the people safety of the passengers so this is a unique requirement for passenger ships all over internationally okay or other ships like your bulk carriers tankers or container ships those ships are not required to be inspected every time they sail out from a port but passenger ship yes okay inspection of inspection and approval of statutory equipments like life saving appliances fire fighting appliances and navigational aids detention of overloaded and unsafe ships if unsafe ships they find they will be detaining them they will not allow them to sail then supervision of ship repairs and construction of new vessels so construction of new vessel not that maritime administrator is going to be constructing new vessels but they will be keeping a vigil eye on such construction because construction has to be fulfilling all the requirements as per the law okay further additional functions what have come to them mandatory port state control so this word is uh, used here mandatory port state control okay so we are going to see what is this port, port state control obligatory flag state inspection now this flag state inspection you know what it is uh, ships which are registered with the country it becomes a duty of the maritime administrator to ensure that these ships are in fit condition and they are fit for the purpose they are built so suppose a bulk carrier is built to um, transport bulk cargo it should be fit to go to sea and carry bulk cargo okay so and that that has to be ensured by the flag state administration that is flag state control they have to ensure that and ship should be safe safe for the people who are sailing on the ship safe for the environment and safe for the properties okay so that all this thing they have to ensure and they have to ensure further that they must comply all the international regulations okay then safety management audits so international safety management system is implemented on ship it has to be complied and such audits also have to be carried out by flag state administration of for the ships which are under their flag under their flag is registered with them okay then ship port facility security audit so this is now ship port facility so this is ports also must be having a safety and security audit which also is required to be done by maritime administrator as well as ships also towards security aspects security aspects are those aspects which will be guarding ship or taking precautions against the pirates and terrorist activities so against that this security audits have to be carried out for ports as well as for ships okay implementation of new imo instruments including amendments if any whatever imo is bringing out new new conventions 
those are called as instruments here so they have to be uh, like if we take case of india these we have to get them passed as legislation through lok sabha and rajya sabha and then it will come as law and then it has to be complied and enforced okay so this is a map of uh, india which uh, i need not say and which shows uh, you major ports of india on the east coast and west coast of india where we are having mercantile marine department offices so just to remember mercantile marine department is branch offices of dg shipping and all these ports all over india wherever these offices are there they are not called as dg shipping office but it is still called as po mmd okay mercantile marine department okay further we are having regional offices for sales sales means sailing vessels sailing vessels are vessels which which uh, make voyage or which move from place a to place b over oceans or over seas by using wind wind as energy so those are called as sailing vessels and as sailing vessels and motor driven vessels which are using diesel engines so both are different operating wise as well as uh, their uh, capability or constraint wise so sailing vessels are basically mostly coastal vessels and they are having different set of rules and these offices are not everywhere but these offices are in mumbai jamnagar and tutikore where more you know, sailing ships are there and sailing ships are built also in india so these uh, offices are there to facilitate all the services government services to these sail boats or sailing ships and such offices are there in mumbai jamnagar and tutikore okay and of course headquarter is in mumbai okay now here this one just to remember this is uh, this is a shipping master okay shipping master so remember this term and at least now uh, whatever students are attending this class at least those many students when the question comes to write a short note or big note whatever so you should not say shipping master is captain of the ship okay so just listen listen me carefully the captain of the ship is as per merchant shipping act is called official term or official uh, post name who is in charge on the ship is master only master okay so master of the ship is captain of the ship okay and master is as per merchant shipping act as per law he is overall in charge on the ship okay so this master is a captain of the ship and shipping master is not captain of the ship shipping master is non sailor he is not sailor he is not on the ship his office is not there on the ship his office is ashore ashore means he is attached officer to dg shipping's office he works under director general of shipping as post is shipping master and shipping master post also was created by britishers only so this officer shipping master he is posted for control of one section under merchant shipping act and which is that section which is that zone he looks after or he is in charge so he is basically connected with the seafarers seafarers means crew who are working on board okay so let us see shipping master first line i am saying uh, which is in bold letter shipping master is not master of the ship so this is the first line so please do not write your answer that shipping master is captain of the ship and he controls all the ship because at least i find at least 10 answer sheets with this type of thing and then suppose this question you are attempting and suppose marks allotted to this question is suppose 
So you will not get any marks if you say shipping master is captain of the ship because then basic concept is not clear. So you will lose all the marks and whatever one page or one and a half page you have written about shipping master that goes waste. Okay. So just remember that. Okay. So shipping master's offices originally they were in Mumbai and Calcutta because the seafarers recruitment was done in Mumbai and earlier, like one in the East Coast and one on West Coast. So all the crew or seafarers, they were registered in Mumbai and Calcutta that time. But now they are also registered in Chennai, they are registered in Kochi. So shipping master, wherever such separate post is not there, then POMMD does that work of shipping master. Okay. So shipping master, what is what is his work? Let's see. Yeah, other ports, POMMD office will carry out the functions of shipping master. Shipping master's role is your engagement and discharge of seamen. Engagement and discharge, why we say the seafarers, whenever they join the ship, they join for a specific contract specific period contract. So normal seafarers contracts are nine months contract. So once nine months are completed, he is engaged for nine months on ship. Then he comes home, then he is free and engagement finished. Then again, whenever he will come again, new contract will be made for nine months or whatever. Nowadays, officers are making contract for four months, three months, two months, nine months, six months. So whatever contract is made, so that is each time different contract and different engagement. It is not that you, we are joining office at age of 20 and we are retiring at 60. It is not like that. This is all over internationally. These are all contracted jobs for specific period of contract to work on ship. Okay. So engagement and discharge of seamen is overall that process is looked after by shipping master. So that means each seaman goes on ship. His entire data is taken by shipping master and entire his uh, service, um, total service, when he joined the ship, whether he is receiving salary or not whether his money is going to monthly, his allotments are going to his family or not. So all such type of things are seen by shipping master. Also shipping master will be looking after that. Suppose there are 1000 seafarers all over means total in India, where, whether everybody gets job or not. So that also is looked after by shipping master. Okay. Then treatment of distress semen, treatment of distress semen is suppose some person is hospitalized, some person has met with accident, seafarers, then a ship, uh, suppose a person was working on ship and crew is in hospital. So ship is not going to wait till crew gets okay. So ship, uh, ship sails out and seamen remains in hospital without any support. So, only support is owners may be representative, which may be agent. So he will be looking after him. So immediately if such situation occurs, then shipping master is in charge for that seaman. So once he is discharged from the hospital, his all accounts of wages, his balance money, his uh, uh, remaining articles on ship, all are deposited with shipping master and that person can go to shipping master and he can take all his articles. He can take charge from shipping master. Okay. So shipping master is government officer who, who will be looking after the total welfare of the people. In case, suppose the person dies on ship. Yes, please. Okay. So, uh, Suppose seafarer <laughs> dies on ship by accident or by whichever this thing, whichever cause, then his uh, mortal remains that also responsibility becomes of shipping master to uh, deal with next of kin, family, his balance wages, his uh, whatever articles were there on the ship. So personal belongings, all these things will be deposited with shipping master. 
and shipping master will be liaisoning with uh, one side is next of kin, other side is the company. Company means shipping uh, company owner, and they will be doing this needful. Okay. Then inquiries and disputes between seamen and masters. Okay. So while working on board such contracted job, many times it happens that owner may have problem with the people who are working on the ship or people who are working on the ship, they may have problem with the owner and vice versa. It can be possible because not that every time everything goes smooth, smoothly and goody goody all the time. So sometimes such issues are there and such disputes and inquiries will be conducted by shipping master. So one side will be seamen. Shipping master is government officer as a third party person in charge and other side will be captain of the ship and owner of the ship. So whatever disputes are there, whatever disciplinary matters are there, like suppose one person is, uh, uh, suppose he corals on ship or he is uh, consuming a lot of alcohol. He, be, he is not uh, behaving in disciplined manner. He is indisciplined. So such type of cases are also coming to shipping master and he will give the justice and he will uh, uh, give his verdict that okay, so and so person is at fault. So he will be fined as per Merchant Shipping Act or his CDC will be suspended if he is at fault. If owner is at fault, then owner will have to give compensation so that shipping master will declare some award. Okay, so those powers are given to shipping master under Merchant Shipping Act. Okay, then medical examinations of seafarers. So those also reports will be going to shipping master whether a person joining a ship is fit or not. Okay, so that also he will be. Nowadays also additional work that uh, all over India the doctors who are acquiring knowledge of this uh, fitness of seafarers, so though they are given approval that he is approved, DG shipping approved doctor. So it need not be only in Mumbai and Calcutta, such doctors are there. All over India, you can have doctor anywhere. So seafarer can do his medical test before coming to Mumbai or Calcutta for engagement. He can do at his native place or wherever uh, near a city. He can go and do that, which doctor is approved by DG shipping. Okay. Then further, the shipping master also has to issue the CDC. CDC is Continuous Discharge Certificate. This is like a Siemens book. It used to be taken as a Siemens book, but now it is uh, basically a service book of Siemens, seafarer service book. Without this service book, you are not able to join a ship as a sea, uh, seafarer or seaman. Okay. So this service book used to be issued by, used to be, is now also they are issuing, but now with internationally uh, more some identity to seamen, some authentic identity to seamen over and above the passport, one more document is issued by the shipping master is called SID, Seamen's Identity Document. And Seamen's Identity Document is based on the biometric data. Biometric means your eyes and your finger uh, fingerprints. Okay, so such document like your PAN card or Aadhaar is issued to seamen. So he can travel without visa to many countries as a seafarer and join a ship or sign off from a ship and come home. So SID is also mandatory requirement nowadays and it is now taken as seamen's identity document with which you can scan it on your passport anywhere, uh, um, scan it on any computer or PC anywhere in the world at exit and entry points and they can get your all bio data immediately downloaded in your computer that you are an authentic semen registered in India. So this is SID and whether you are the same person or not, 
that can be tested with your biometrics okay so such uh, duties are there of shipping master many times this question comes for five marks in short notes nowadays we are having this uh, short note question compulsory question number one is compulsory and out of other questions other questions uh, say other uh, seven questions you have to attempt five questions so but question number one is compulsory and from other seven questions you have to attempt four sorry not five four so total questions attempting is five each question carries 20 marks and to your total paper is of 100 marks okay so such duties are there you can elaborate these duties and write many many points as much as you can to get those five marks okay so let us see further now there is a government appointed officer working under dg shipping is called as siemens welfare officer so what is this welfare officer so when seaman is engaged on ship and he is seafarer so for his family's welfare his own welfare the government has set up some uh, organizations or some uh, places where he can be having some entertainment in port or maybe staying lodging boarding so such type of thing or maybe his children uh, get some assistance or in case he is medically unfit or some uh, big expenses come for hospitalization then from this fund they can be given or maybe some uh, holiday uh, resorts for you know enjoying during his vacation so such things are done let us see which all those supervise inspect hostels so there are hostels in mumbai or in um, uh, Calcutta, Chennai, Kochi. So such hostels are there. If you have CDC and SID, you can stay in those hostels provided rooms are available. And those are at little cheaper rate for seafarer. Okay. Uh, or other outsiders cannot stay there. Then welfare clubs. So there are welfare clubs like Siemens Club. And those are also run by uh, the uh officers okay other welfare centers siemens welfare center close contact with the ships in port assist whenever necessary make provision for hostel accommodation recreation medical aid hospitalization convalescences, homes educational aid so such type of things done through those funds which are collected little bit from government little bit from shipping companies and little bit from the siemens own contribution okay then take charge and keep safe custody of personal effects of hospitalized siemens assist in functioning of welfare board specific functions given under merchant shipping act so this is also his functions of siemens welfare officer are also given under merchant shipping act his role and responsibility any other as per central government so any other duties which are given by the dg shipping okay so he is also one more officer attached to DG Shipping's office. Now, training institutes, earlier we did not have, up to 2008, we did not have any separate university for the maritime. Maritime university was not there. So all the training institutes, whether government or private, they were all approved by DG Shipping. And now also they are approved by DG Shipping. But now, from 2008, in Chennai, the Indian Maritime University is established. And this Indian Maritime University, whatever government had their own campuses as maritime training centers approved by DG Shipping, those are all now part of IMU. So IMU's headquarters are in Chennai. And all over the centers, which were government owned centers, training centers are now merged with IMU. So that is Calcutta, Mumbai, Vishakhapatnam, Kochi, and Kandla, seven existing institutes merge with IMU. LBS camps are Mumbai, Mary Calcutta, Mumbai, TS Chanakya in Mumbai, 
Mumbai means it is in Navi Mumbai, Nerul. Then National Maritime Academy, Chennai. IIPM, Indian Institute of Port Management, Calcutta. Then National Ship Design and Research Center, that is in Vishakapatnam. So all these became as a part of IMU branches all over. So seven branches are there of IMU. But all these training is approved, seafarers training has to be approved by DG Shipping. Okay. And other than this, about 150 private institutes all over India are there, sir, which are approved. Sir, there is an NMIS approved uh, by DG Shipping? NMIS is, no, NMIS is, is having a separate uh, total NMIS. approval. Hello. NMIS is not for institute, not institute for going on ship. It is not institute for seafarers going on ship. Okay. So this is only uh, as a academics. In the, okay, subjects are merchant navy. And uh, this is under a special uh, provision of law uh, from our uh, Lok Sabha. And this is coming under uh, shipping ministry, directly approved by shipping ministry for benefit of uh, ship uh, merchant shipping. Okay. So that is why it is not coming uh, under DG shipping. Okay. So DG shipping approved another 150 maritime institutes are there privately owned all over India, which are having approval and inspections and audits by DG shipping. And they are conducting various courses or various uh, training for the seafarers who are joining the ships. Okay, this IMU is offering courses like BSc Nautical Science, Diploma Nautical Science, leading to BSc Nautical Science, BTEC, LLM, MBA, Port Management, Training and Logistics, Pre-C. So they are also like uh, earlier before 2008, we did not have much uh, facility of training other than NMIS. NMIS was for shore people. And uh, this one was there, one, uh, uh, this is Neva, ne National Ship Design and Research. And this was there, IIPM, Indian Institute of Port Management. So only one or two only such centers were there. So NMIS was uh, there giving such a knowledge to uh, ordinary people uh, to work in shipping. Okay. And uh, these institutes are taken approval from DG shipping. Okay. And uh, nowadays, a lot of, uh, there is a lot of difference between these training institutes, marine training institutes, uh, and other training institutes in India. Because these training institutes have to be uh, of international standard, and they have to conduct courses to international standard to satisfy or to comply with STCW of IMO. Okay, so that is why they have to be different. DG Shipping is doing a lot of efforts to bring it to international level, the training and education of seafarers. Then only our, our uh, citizens or our seafarers can fetch good jobs outside India, international jobs, and they can earn foreign exchange for the country. And so many families can be, um, uh, their financial status can come up. Okay because seafarers are getting quite okay salary, not uh, as comparable with IT sector, but it's okay. So with their whatever education they have at lower level, but they get quite okay salary. Okay, so that is uh, what is the role of maritime uh, administrator. And we have discussed Indian maritime administrator, more or less any country's maritime administrator will be having more or less same similar role to play. Okay. So with this, we are going to be getting over with this uh, topic. And uh, sometimes the question comes as Indian maritime administrator. So two different words come, Indian maritime administrator, write a note for 20 marks. International Maritime Organization write note 20 marks. So when you are reading the question, you have to be very, very careful that one is Indian Maritime Administrator is actually DG Shipping. The question is asking DG Shipping. 
and other question is asking IMO, which is International Organization of Under United Nations. Okay, so one has to be careful because in exam hall, some of the students they write exactly reverse. When uh, uh, Indian Maritime Administrator were uh, notice there, they write about IMO. Okay, so uh, be a little bit careful. Okay, so. Anything you want to discuss, we will uh, take uh, one, two questions and then we will proceed to our next topic, okay, of today's, which is also... Uh, sir, yes, sir, regarding the sitting master, uh, yes. uh, sir, uh, I am working in agency at Kandapo. Okay. One of our crew got the uh, corona positive few months ago. And he was there in India uh, near about two months. Sir. But uh, no one from government authority came, like the shipping master, to contact him. No, see, so no authority is going to come to seafarer to contact him. Kandla, there is also a shipping master's office. Government's officer for port, uh, this thing, uh, health, is port health officer is there so but no one no one will come because agent has to take care of him okay mm -hmm. and whether you are taking care or not that will be overseen by government that you have to prove uh, see, yes, yes. See, see there is a difference see who has engaged the same end? the shipping company has engaged the same end. So, yes. as per the law, as per the contract, to look after semen is the company job. So, company must look after him. And the government will oversee. So, the shipping master is going to oversee whether you are doing your job correctly or not. But there was no involvement of shipping master, sir. Only, only after uh, he, he, he was Filipino. And uh, uh, when his wife, uh, once he got admitted in hospital, then there was no contact uh, with his family. Then his wife complains in Delhi embassy. Then Delhi embassy approached, uh, approached this uh, Mumbai office. Then Mumbai office, Mumbai embassy called me. The Filipino embassy in Mumbai called me that uh, there is one crew under your agency who is hospitalized. His wife is complaining. Tell me his health status. Then I dropped his mail and then I keep him regularly updated about his health. Yes. Yes, because they will not come to know, know that uh, he is corona positive and he is admitted in hospital. So if agent is taking care of him, if owner is taking care of him, there is no need of government officer to come and interfere. But when certain thing is not happening, then fam family will con complain because to look after the welfare of seamen, is job of uh, government officer. So he is not going to be taking care of the same end. He is going to ensure that somebody takes care of him. Understand? Yes. yes. It is an authority, no? Maritime authority. Okay. Sir, I have a doubt. I mean, yes. uh, like, as you said, the shipping master has been acting uh, or it, can, it is, uh, can be said as a facilitation center for the MMD. Like any seafarer working on board, I mean, in a while ship is in port and all, if that guy fell overboard or it fell, uh, it, I mean, I mean, suddenly uh, get evacuated from a ship or someone throws him on a, in water and all due to disputes on board and all with the fellow seafarers. Okay. So that time the shipping master uh, basically interfere to solve the problem and give the settlement to the, uh, the seafarer family or the concerned NOK person and all. Yes, they have to. They have to. Okay. Because and, uh, they're going to take a necessary action regarding to that. See what happens. See what happens uh, in contract. Okay. There are two yeah. or three different, different uh, roles here and uh, legislation or law is here. See, first of all, uh, seafarer has fallen overboard from which uh, ship and that flag of the ship matters. That is number one. Okay. okay. Because flag of the ship, the rule on the ship or the uh, laws which are applicable on the ship are of the country 
ऑफ ऑफ द द रजिस्टर्ड कंट्री ओके रजिस्टर्ड कंट्री ऑफ द शिप ओके सो दैट इज नंबर वन नंबर टू वेन एवर सी फेर साइंस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज बेस्ड ऑन सम डॉक्यूमेंट विच इज साइंड विद द शिप ओनर एंड द क्रू यूनियंस and in that contract yes. there will be uh, written what compensation has to be paid to him compensation part eh? but yeah, yeah. investigation on board the ship suppose ship was in international waters very little yeah. government of india can do with such investigation investigation has to be done by the uh, flag state okay, administration okay. so suppose okay. panama flag ship was there panama uh, country has to do the investigation on board if ship was at okay. high seas but suppose okay. tomorrow ship is in mumbai let it be of yeah. any flag then uh, in such you can cases, consider it is an indian flag vessel only and trading look i mean a postally and uh, this happen yes so, then then definitely uh, dg shipping has to do inquiry inquiry, inquiry as well as uh, investigation complete investigation okay. and further further even police complaint also can be filed and uh, harbor police can take up this matter and they may try to arrest the ship until the problem solve or they may not keep on hold of the ship to trade further yes, the issue yes, can sir. be resolved uh, it need not they need not uh, arrest the ship but they will uh, suppose they want to do panchanama they want to see local uh, ship uh, means uh, uh, site of crime so they will have to hold okay. the ship for a few days and then the inquire uh, they may tell all the crew and officers so you sign them off and bring to our office so one after yeah, other one after other they will inter yes. interrogate them okay like that okay okay yes. so understood yeah and uh, they going to help the uh, concern seafarer family to get the claim and all anything as yes. per the pna yes yes and, yes uh, that is the job of shipping master pba yes yeah, that yeah. is job of shipping master but but uh, you see Uh, 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 nothing happens automatically so seafarer yeah, yeah. family will have to keep on knocking the doors okay hmm. so yes. the system i mean doesn't go as per the flow though we need to keep on a ha it, it doesn't go on. auto for auto this thing no <laughs> okay <laughs> it cannot because okay. even for a not for seafarer only if suppose tomorrow uh, you are working in suppose factory and tomorrow some accident takes place and you lose your life it is not automatically that company is going to give you some uh, this thing money they have to be some yeah. followers for that maybe unions maybe uh, families of the this thing correct no? yes. yeah yeah okay. but basically they have to do the way without i mean telling anyone no sir and yes. it's a procedure <laughs> yes that, that that keeps on happening but there has to be push from somebody okay that that will happen not that it will not happen it will happen but there has to be push because see suppose i will i will give you one uh, this thing example okay suppose uh, at your home for some uh, you have uh, uh, kept a uh, domestic help suppose aapko madad karne ke liye koi bhi aa raha hai aapke ghar mein okay aur usko suppose aapke ghar mein kuch ho gaya to aap uski madad karoge uh, on your own voluntarily answer is no If on humanity you, ground yes also sir yes but mostly people will not people my uncle is uh, turn off your mic my uncle yes sir okay so it is uh, happening always everywhere it is not uh, the thing so somebody suppose that help demands that okay this happened at your home and i must be compensated i must get so and so then only you will come to negotiation table but see if uh, you are driving a car on road and accident takes place many a times majority of the people will run away some of the people will stop stop there and help the victim and they will say okay mere galti se accident hua hai so mere upar matlab i will pay compensation i will come to hospital i will take him to hospital i will bear the charges but most of the time they, it will be hit and run case Okay. if nobody is watching you you will not say that i have made accident and i have this thing you will just go away okay. so that is nature of human everybody is not japanese 
This is only Jap Japanese people yeah, yeah. will not do that. Yeah. World over, it is proven. Okay. Proven. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so, sir. after this, uh, see what we have seen. Indian uh, International Maritime Organization, they make conventions. Then to make rules and to enforce the rules, compliance of the rules has to be done by the individual countries and those countries, their maritime administrator will be doing that work. Okay. So that also we have seen. Now, Sir, in additional function of MMD, there is written that mandatory port state control means... Uh, MMD means MMD officers are port control officers. Both are same or what, sir? Uh, please repeat. Who are same? Uh, this port state control and MMD functions. In in MMD functions, take minute, take minute. Are, that we are going to discuss that now. Port state control, flag state control. We are going to discuss now. Okay. So your question, you keep it with you. You will get answer now. Okay. So let us see now, okay, one quick example. Suppose two boys are there or two children are there, I will not say boys, two children are there and they are neighbors. Okay, they are staying as neighbor. Ek dusre ke ghar ke samne samne rehte hai. So we will say child A and child B. When child B visits child A at his house, and especially in uh, cities, so suppose neighbor's child has come to your house. So most of the family members of the house, they will be keeping a good vigil. Vigil means good eye on that child. That how he speaks, how he behaves, whether he is touching anywhere, whether he will break something, whether he will damage our house something, or whether he will not influence your own child. Like that, you will be having uh, some vigil eye. Yes or no? This statement is understood by you and yes or no? Neighbor's boy, neighbor's yes, neighbor's boy come to your house. Will you keep a special eye, eye on him? Or whatever yeah, small yeah. thing also does. Suppose tomorrow he tears a newspaper from your house, you will immediately shout at him, you know, such a small thing also you are not understanding, like that you will tell. And you will complain to his parents also. Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Hmm, okay. But same thing your own boy does. Will you? No. You will be taking not serious view about it. You will say, Bacha hai. Yes or no? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Right yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, this is totally, I am taking your tangent from the subject. Okay. Little, uh, totally away from the subject. So, now suppose this boy A goes to B's house. Now B had come to A's house. A boy has go to, gone to B's house. Same thing will happen. No? His also uh, parents will be keeping good wa a watch on him. And whatever he does, it will be seen as a big mistake or big this thing, misbehavior. Yes. So now you have to answer my another question. Boy A and boy B. Whose responsibility to put them in discipline? Good discipline, good order, good compliance, good listening. Whose responsibility is that? His guardian, he's taking care of person. Yes. So parents of boy A will have to look after their child so he is good behaved. And parents of boy B will have to look after his behavior and discipline him. Yes, correct, no? So, when, suppose now, suppose now boy A comes to B's house. 
boy A comes to B's house, and suppose A's parents or A's A's parents have come to B's house also. So boy is also there, and parents also have come, and he does something wrong. So will his parents shout at him, or will the will his parents correct him immediately? दूसरे के घर में है बच्चा, उसको करेक्ट करेंगे? गर्ल्स कैंडिडेट इन क्लास Uh, it can be girl also girl a girl and b girl so we are going to compare with the ships now so ship now suppose indian ship registered in india this becomes suppose boy a or girl a okay whose duty to discipline him whose duty to ensure that he complies with all the rules and even internationally anybody other country's home he goes he is well behaved and disciplined whose duty that authority sir which which that care authority any... shipping master or mmd we can say basically yes means no your your answer should be maritime administrator yeah dg okay maritime administrator so that means parents of the ship ship those are maritime administrator okay now suppose still that boy goes out to other country means ship a registered in india goes to europe and not behaving properly so european people will look to look uh, look for those faults whatever faults he is doing in any pain no any pain no any pain first to like psc board ship found the engine not following the safety related to crew or on board operations Yes. Yes. Uh, at a time, one person on this speak, please. So suppose ship A registered in India goes to Europe. Will Europeans look after that ship? That whether she is complying correctly, his behavior is good. Whether ship is in good condition, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely yes. Yeah. And so vice versa, European ships come to India. will indian government look after that ship yes sir yes no yes sir. okay so this is only this concept of flag state control and port state control okay both words we will see first the meaning of the both words and then you will be okay with that so let us see now see first word huh? flag flag is nationality of the ship correct na no? flag is nationality of the ship where ship is registered so ship registered in panama it is panamian ship ship registered in india it is indian ship okay then meaning of state in our first lecture itself we have seen in shipping meaning of state is country it is country so flag countries control okay so flag state control so flag state control so flag suppose ship's flag is indian flag so country kaun sa hai indian flag ka country india so india is going to be having control over the indian ship and that control is not control means operation or actual operation of the ship no control means to ensure that ship is sea worthy condition sea worthy condition complying with all the rules and regulations that is national rules as well as international rules and regulations which are applicable for the ship and ship remains all the time fit for the purpose it is built so ship is built suppose ship is oil tanker that means ship is built to carry oil cargo 
so ship has to be fit to carry oil cargo throughout the time it should not be unfit and this unfit word means it is unseaworthy ship unseaworthy ship means ship which is unfit to go to oceans unfit to make voyage is called as unseaworthy ship so ship has to be fit in all respect ship must comply with all the regulations ship has to be maintained properly as per the requirement and this has to be ensured by the flag state flag state of the ship which happens to be wherever ship is registered that country's maritime administration suppose ship is registered in singapore then singapore maritime administration has to ensure that anywhere in the world ship goes it is well maintained it is seaworthy it is fit for the purpose it is safe for the environment it is safe for the crew it is safe for the people it is safe for the cargo and it is safe for the environment okay so this is flag state control but now ships are trading all over the world across the globe and it may not be possible all the time that governments go after the ship and keep on searching and keep on having good control over the ships like i will tell you suppose the same statement i give you here with uh, we can compare with maybe cars or we can compare with uh, this uh, uh, ch child a child b suppose child a child a as long as child a is at home parents are looking after him parents are controlling him parents are putting him in discipline but suppose this child a goes to hostel which is say 5000 kilometers or 5500 miles away is it possible every day the child is under eyes of parents no so then whoever is there he is going to look after that child yes so it is not possible for the parents to look after the child or to discipline the child parents are not going to see every day whether child has worn proper uniform whether child has combed his hair whether child has brushed his teeth they just believe that whatever education we have given with that he will do it or she will do it but sometimes it may not happen so then there has to be somebody who is going to look after and in ships also it is same that suppose indian ship has not come to india for quite some time it is not possible that government sends officer officers their officers for just for inspection any part of the world just for inspection of the ship so the ship may not be inspected by the governments ship may not the owner might not have kept the ship as required the ship may not be having good maintenance and ship may not be in ship shape and there has to be somebody looking after the ship and that somebody becomes port state control so this second word which is there port port means whichever port ship is in suppose now indian ship is in rotterdam in europe okay so what is the name of the port rotterdam state is which which state that port belongs to netherlands and so netherlands maritime administrative control over that ship so ship indian ship is there alongside in rotterdam so maritime administrator of Rotter rotterdam that is netherlands will inspect the ship and that inspection is called as port state control inspection so they will inspect the ship with microscope with magnifying glass because this ship ship this is not belonging to them it is belonging to whom the ship we are discussing it is belonging to whom which is there in rotterdam 
इंडिया इंडिया सो सो ये हमारा बच्चा नहीं है तो उसको पूरी तरह से यू हैव टू सी हिम इन ऑल एस्पेक्ट्स वेदर ही इज सेफ वेदर ही इज कॉम्प्लाइंग विद द रूल्स वेदर ही इज हैविंग गुड मेंटेनेंस ही इज सी वर्दी फिट फॉर द पर्पस ऑल सच टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स दे आर गोइंग टू सी एंड इन केस दे फाइंड समथिंग रॉन्ग which is major then they will not allow ship to sail they will not allow ship to sail in case ship is posing danger to environment ship is posing danger to safety of life and safety of the cargo so they will say okay rectify the defects and then only you can sail so this is called as port state control flag state control all these both authorities work with international powers and there is international program about this port port state control and flag state control okay so let us go with uh, what is the function of both so flag state i will not spend much time because we have just discussed maritime administration what they are supposed to do so same thing flag state administration must do only thing flag state administration even ship is not in their port ship is not in their country still they are responsible for compliance of that ships to international regulation national regulations all things the ship must comply and ship has to be fit for the purpose okay so flag state and port state need for enforcement of rules and regulation international regime regime of merchant shipping challenge of exercising compulsory jurisdiction international validity of local law enforcement of international law by local courts okay so one is international law ship must comply national law ship must comply and international law also they are enforceable only if that is made under lok sabha rajya sabha as legislation in individual countries okay let us see further okay this we will not discuss now because we have already discussed enough on this this is also we have discussed okay so several international conventions specify specifically provide an article on control or regulate by virtue of which the contracting state is given powers to enforce the provisions of convention in respect of convention convention yes. ships visiting their ports so hello sir, sir. yes sir no we can't see our slides is me so we cannot uh, see the slide we cannot yes, view sir. it you are not able to see this slide you need uh, no sir no, so we can just see the time. answer time slide Which slide you are able to see? Question okay. answer time. The Q and answer slide, sir. Time. Okay. Oh, Question answer time. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. Okay. I was thinking I I was already on that slide, you know, first uh, slide. Anyway, we will move to that slide. good that you uh, told me otherwise i would have gone uh, you know uh, speaking so we were on that uh, this slide actually which i was explaining question 4 the flag state control now you are able to see yes sir yes yeah. sir yes sir so yes sir i was explaining you this flag state control meaning of these words so flag is where the ship is registered that country is flag state is the country where ship is registered and the control means uh, uh the ship, uh, ship will be under their uh, charge not that they are going to operate the ship they are going to ensure the difference is they are going to ensure that owner does all this thing the ship people are complying with the rules and regulation and ship is fit for the purpose and port state control again we have seen a uh, case of rotterdam port was we have taken as rotterdam the state is netherlands and they are going to inspect any foreign ship under flag port state control okay so 
further let's see okay so this we have seen already this we have seen okay we were seeing this this one i was reading several international conventions specifically provide an article on control or regulate okay by virtue of which contracting state is given power to enforce the provisions of the convention in the respect of convention <coughs> ships visiting their port so ships visiting means foreign ships visiting national port so many of the conventions are giving powers to the governments individual governments to inspect those ships or to control or regulate okay and that is how the word has come port state control or track state control okay the ratifying state in turn enact local laws applicable to all ships waiting their ports thus enabling national ports to exercise jurisdiction by punishing all flags including foreign flag violating the applicable international convention okay so whoever does not follow international convention the government inspectors are going to hold those ships and punish them okay so how they will punish what is this system so let us see obligation of flag state as i said this flag state obligation under under international laws of international maritime organization that we will not uh, see because flag state administration role and responsibility we have discussed thoroughly in our previous lecture as well as today also okay so i will just uh, run through this quickly i will just keep this slide for little time for 2 minutes without speaking so this is what we have seen earlier in our previous lecture also construction principles prevention of maritime uh, pollution then manning of the ship safety of navigation promulgate laws and promulgate laws providing legal basis of establishment of registry and maintain register of the ships okay this also we will not spend much time okay now another this we did not discuss this casualty and incident investigation this is also one of the role of flag state and flag state must undertake prompt and thorough casualty incident investigation and submit report to imo as appropriate so the flag state like now suppose indian flag state administration is your dg shipping any accident like uh, one of the student was asking that uh, one of the seafarers has fallen overboard on indian ship so government of india's dg shipping will do investigation thorough investigation and also they are under, are under obligation under international laws to submit a detailed report about the incident or incident from the ship okay so they are supposed to submit report to imo also forget about submitting report to your own government your own government also you have to submit report okay so what all report this dg shipping will have to submit to imo see here number of accidents incidents casualties reported to imo in terms of international casualty database number of accidents involving personal injuries leading to absence of duty for 3 days and more means any accident takes place on ship and suppose that person is away from his duty for more than 3 days such incidences have to be reported to dg imo by the flag state administration number of lives lost number of ships lost so how many total seafarers lost their life and number of ships lost so how many ships sank which are registered with you how many people lost their life that also is required to be reported to international forum number of incidents incidents involving release of pollutants means how many times you have your ships your you means your registered ships have done pollution and how much pollution has taken place 
number of ships detained by other flag state, right? Other flag state means suppose Indian ship has gone to like our ship has we have taken our Indian ship to Rotterdam in Netherlands and suppose Netherlands governments inspect that ship and they say oh ship is not safe to go to sea and suppose they detain that ship then that report will come to government of India that oh your baby is here and baby is not behaving okay baby is not maintained properly so this is our report on your baby so please take care so they will not allow ship to sail and such a detention has to be reported to IMO okay so Indian government will have to tell to United Nations body that is IMO International Maritime Organization that yes my one ship was detained in Netherlands because ship was not maintained in good condition and those whatever report is there that will be submitted to IMO okay so communication to IMO of information required in mandatory instruments delegation of authority to recognize organization must be clearly recorded black state retains responsibility of certificate etc issued on its behalf so this ro recognize organizations or not having so many inspectors who can visit each and every ship whenever required and inspect the ship so what they will do they have given they will authorize some classification society or professional body to go on ship and inspect the ships on their behalf and submit report and such bodies which are or such organizations which are recognized as official performer of dg shipping's work are called as recognized organizations recognized organizations okay so each government must declare each maritime administrator must declare that okay so and so body is recognized administrator and they will carry out work on our behalf and submit reports to us they will issue certificates on our behalf and report those certificate to us okay so this one additional work for flag state administration okay <laughs> okay okay so this is okay if it's a difficulties no we will not discuss okay let us come quickly to port state control port state control is the inspection of foreign ships in national ports to verify that condition of ship and its equipment comply with the requirements of international regulations and that the ship is manned and operated in compliance with these rules okay as we have discussed again and again and as i stated again and again that our Indian ship is in Rotterdam, which is in Netherlands. And Nether Netherlands government is inspecting a foreign flagship, which is Indian flagship in Netherlands, is under powers of port state control. And they will inspect the ship for compliance of international regulations. Okay. Provision of port set control is to eliminate substandard ships in order to ensure IMO's objectives of safe, secure, efficient shipping on clean oceans. Let us discuss this because whenever you will write a note on port set control, this word has to be there, substandard ships. So IMO, this uh, uh, IMO's uh, objective or slogan is safe secure efficient ship or efficient shipping on clean ocean has to be achieved if you have all ships in good condition 
if ships are not in good condition, so somebody must find out which ships are not in good condition. And when such ships are not in good condition, those ships are called as substandard ships, unworthy ships, substandard ships. So these countries will be inspecting foreign flag ships under port state control and they will be finding out which ships are not complying with the international and national regulations and those will be declared as substandard ships and once you declare substandard ship ship will not be allowed to sail unless the deficiencies whatever defects are there those are rectified ship is made in perfect order whatever compliance was not there it has to be complied with and then ship will be allowed to sail so now ship is sailing after doing all the compliance so ship has become safer and it is no more substandard okay so ship is fit now so that is why eliminate substandard ship so this inspection by port state control and flag state control is to eliminate and more so by port, port state control because flag state control may not reach everywhere all over world to inspect the ships. Sir, uh, yes, please. Sir, when flag state control is Indian ships sir, going overseas on sail, is detained in our port, the like transshipment port. It is going to it is going further carrying a uh, cargo, sir. Can hmm. it go? It is detained in transshipment port. So it can reach to destination port or it has to be detained there itself. There itself, it, immediate immediate action. If immediate suppose, action. what about the cargo, sir? Cargo also will remain with the ship. So that what? is why when you are giving cargo. You will see you will see the condition of the ship 10 times. Okay. You will see international reports. You will see the substandard ship, whether your ship was declared substandard some other time. Okay. We will see, we will see into that. Okay. So one by one, your questions will be answered. Just uh, have a little patience. Okay. So that is substandard ships, elimination of substandard ships. Okay, last para I did not. The main objective is to take corrective action before ships are allowed to sail further. So before ships are allowed to sail further, means from one port to other port, ships have to be fit to go to sea. Okay, they should not be posing danger. See, posing danger for what? See, you know, posing danger to life, life of the seafarers, life of the people. Number two, posing danger to environment. Environment means sea and the oceans so it is not posing any danger of pollution and number three for property so ships should be fit okay when ships do not call at home ports for considerable period of time it may be possible that maintenance has suffered due to various reasons therefore it is imperative imperative that ships are inspected at various ports to ensure the compliance of the rules so just to I tell you about this last uh, line what uh, they saying that ships are not visiting home ports means see now if you know uh, indian people going to uh, foreign countries for working so what they do you know whatever things are whenever they come back to india whatever things are cheaper in india they will do all those things like suppose dental treatment, medical treatment, then purchase of your utensils, purchase of your garments, purchase of shoes, all such type of things are very, very expensive outside India. So they will do all this maintenance here, not ships. I'm not talking about ships, people who are working outside India. Whenever they will come to India, they will do all these things, purchase as well as looking after their body. Okay, so similar way, suppose Indian ship is there, Indian flag ship is there, whenever ship will come to India, the owner will say, okay, I can do little repair cheaper. So he will do the repairs very cheap, rather than doing repairs in 
Europe or Japan or America. So he will prefer to do. But suppose for a long time ship does not come to India, then such repairs are pending. The owner is saying, oh, when you will come to India, we will do it. When you will come to India, we will do it. Because that way I will save a lot of money. But what is happening to ship? Ship is becoming more and more, more and more unseaworthy or substandard. Substandard. And then somebody has to catch the ship to point out that you are substandard. You have to be repaired here itself. You cannot continue like this. Okay. So that is the meaning of visiting home port. Okay. Various articles and regulations in different international conventions provide for control procedures to be followed by a party to relevant convention with regard to foreign ships visiting their ports. The authorities have to therefore enforce their provisions and identify deficiencies. Deficiencies mean defects, if any, which may render the ship into substandard and ensure that remedial measures are taken. No more favorable treatment is to be given to ships that are not parties to the convention. I mean, suppose the ship, uh, ship says that our country, suppose Indian ship has gone there or any country has gone or any ship has gone there and that ship says that our government is not party to this SOLAS convention or MARPOL or IMO conventions. So that doesn't mean then they will say you please do not bring ship to international waters. You remain in your own country and operate the way you want. Okay. If you don't want to comply with the regulations. So no question that somebody says that I'm not party to this. Okay. Then do not do international trading. Okay. I think we'll take a break, small break. So we will join back at 40, 1140. Okay, students? Okay, yes, sir. Okay. So 10 minutes break and we'll join back. Okay. okay. So Irfan Bhai, break for 10 minutes.
Guns. Come back. Let us continue with port state control. So, when port state control inspections they will do the countries. So there. Will. So now, flag state control and foreign flagships which are there in port, that inspection they will do under port state control. But it is not necessary that they will send to port. be the initiative of the party so <clears throat> maybe this port set control authority they decide to inspect the ship that out of suppose 20 ships they decide okay one percent ships we will inspect so one ship will inspect or two ships will inspect out of 20 so like that then maybe owner of the ship may say please carry out inspection of my ship because i want to know what is the condition of the ship because i don't visit i'm not a professional i don't visit myself my ship is operated by some other people so let me see what is the condition of my ship so owner may say please inspect my ship okay then on the request of or information from other port okay other it has become part but it is other port another port so previous port of the ship suppose previous port 
suppose now previous port is Singapore and ship has come to Mumbai and Singapore people think that ship which sailed out from us at last moment they came to know that ship may not be in a good condition. They have not inspected the ship but they came to know that ship is not in good condition at the time of sailing or when ship sailed out from the port. So they will give information to next port, next port of call of the ship and they will say please inspect this ship. There is some suspect we feel so and so thing is not working, we feel so and so thing. So like that information also comes and on that information basis they will uh, inspect the ship. Information from crew a professional body, an association, a trade union or other individual who has interest in the ship, crew, passengers and environment. So any person may tell maritime administrator, please inspect this ship because we feel that ship is not in good condition. Okay, ship is not in good condition and such person who requests, who puts a request for the ship's inspection, he will be having interest in the ship. Like a few minutes back in our earlier uh, uh, interval, he said the cargo is there. So owner of the cargo is worried person. So owner of the cargo also can tell that, okay, please inspect so and so ship because my cargo is there. I want this cargo has to be reaching safe to other port that my husband or my uh, son is sailing on the ship, my daughter is sailing on the ship and ship is not in good condition. That's what we can make out from whatever means. So please inspect the ship. So such information or complaint comes from somebody to the government, they will inspect the ship. Okay. The responsibility of port state control lies with the administrative of the ship. Uh, administration of the state. If ship is the flag of the ship is blacklist. Okay. So what is this blacklist flag? Okay. So let us see that. Okay. So you will understand it a little better. Okay. So see now uh, when you are saying you are going to inspect the ships foreign country maritime administration will inspect the ships which are coming to their port and such inspection reports will be going to IMO. They will be submitted to IMO. They will be submitted to IMO by both parties who is inspecting the, sh inspecting the ship as well as which ships are inspected. So both parties will be reporting that periodical report to IMO. That one party will say, I have inspected 10 foreign flagships in my board of so and so, so and so flag. And out of these three flagships, three flags, ships were detained. Detained means they were not allowed to sail because they were having serious or major deficiency. So that will be report will be going to IMO. Whereas the flag states of all over the world, they will be also submitting their reports that flags, our flag, five ships were report inspected by port state authorities in various ports and all five ships were in good condition. So one report can be like that or other report can be five ships were inspected, four ships were detained. So that means your overall ships of your flag are not well maintained. Okay, you are understanding this. Uh, listen it carefully. Suppose now Indian flagships are inspected all over the world. Suppose. And they are. So suppose 10 ships are inspected and out of that 8 ships are detained. Detained means they were not allowed to sail further. They were found substandard. So if such condition is there, then IMO and international bodies, they will declare this Indian flagships as 
blacklist blacklist ships black human ship is going into some port have blacklist countries so they will immediately inspect the indian ship they will say yes indian generally indian ships are not maintained good so let us inspect that ship i am taking indian uh, ship as because you will understand faster it is not the case that indian ships are on blacklist there are many other countries who are on blacklist but india is also definitely not in white list white list gray list and blacklist there are three this type of list are declared internationally so white list means most of the ships are well maintained of that country it is not of the company it is of the country means when we talk about india it is not ship belonging to shipping corporation of india great eastern sr or your market it is ships okay but overall indian flagships so, so like japanese flagships they may be of 10 different different countries but suppose japanese flagships overall suppose they say that very good condition so japan will be declared as white list name japan then if some percentage of ships are not well then that country's name will be declared in those ships are detained then it will be declared as blacklist so india every year start of the year they are all country start with white list india slips to gray list but till till the time or till now india has not never moved to blacklist okay but india moves to gray list very easily okay so that means indian ships which are sailing across the world they are not some of the ships are not so if ships are in blacklist then these are the criteria how they will inspect the ships they means who the flag state when will inspect the ships these are the codes given for means these are just a sample codes but there are several codes there is a form port state inspection form which is of two page if there is no deficiency it will be given a white paper nil deficiency but if deficiencies are there they will be given this code to the defect is of such a nature that it is posing immediate threat to lives environment and property okay so then 30 code is given 17 is master instructed to rectify deficiency before departure so 17 code is given given but detention is not there but before ship sails to sea that has to be rectified okay 16 to be rectified within 14 days if 14 days time is given then within 14 days you rectify so minor deficiencies Okay, 15 to be rectified by next port of call. 19 rectify major non-conformity before departure, like that. Like that was your the various uh, uh, codes are given. 80 like temporary authorities have seen that, and it's okay. Temporary repairs are done. Okay. But thirty code thirty. As a owner will inform Indian owner of the ship. Suppose Great Eastern, Great Eastern shipping, and there suppose ship is. So your voice is breaking in between. my voice is breaking but uh, yes sir no sir this is proper sir proper no uh, okay so some some of you may be having some network issue anyway indian 
suppose company reports to government of india dg shipping that my ship is detained okay and code 30 okay is it so no sir They have no, to no. come and investigate. Yes, no, not investigate. They will call that company and they will say why your ship is detained. You give reason why you have not maintained your ship. So they are not going to present him for our bouquet. They are going to uh, muster him, muster him, call him and ask him why ship is not maintained properly. Oh. And if you are not able to maintain ship properly, please do not run the ship. Sir, excuse okay. me. So, in case of detention, uh, I want to have the impression that you know, flag state has to visit, uh, visit one, one uh, person has to go and make sure that all the deficiencies are closed. Uh, it is not mandatory requirement that flag state has to visit, depends on the severity of detention. Okay. If detention can be lifted by doing repairs by owner himself, and it is just isolated detention, no problem. But if deficiencies are several deficiencies and several major deficiencies, then flag state will choose whether to send inspector or not. Okay, it is like that. So flag state will decide whether to send inspector for further investigation, further inspection, or carry out additional inspections, carry out additional audit. So that flag state because. Right. In case, of, in, so in case of India, any liability on uh, proof uh, in case of detention? Yes, yes. The government of India has uh, given strict uh, this thing that they will uh, investigate against uh, the captain, chief engineer, senior officers, and who is responsible for such detention. They will find out and there will be punishment also. Punishment means they may suspend tickets also. Ticket, uh, uh, the certificate of competencies which are awarded. So such type of, they are calling such people to DG Shipping's office for further inquiry, for detention. Because if they don't do, then what is happening here now? How it is complicated and uh, having cascading effect. See, suppose one Indian ship is detained in Australia. Second ship is detained in Europe. Third ship is detained in US. Fourth ship is detained somewhere else. And overall percentage of detention is increasing. That means what is that? That means overall generally Indian ships are not maintained properly and India will, India's name will slip. Indian flag name will slip from white list to gray list. Further detentions, it will slip from gray to black. And as soon as you have this blacklist detention list, then every port, any Indian ship goes, it will be inspected. Every port, it will be inspected. Okay. So that is one disadvantage that every port you have to face uh, inspections. Number two, the cargo owners will not give cargo to Indian ships because your country's name is in blacklist. So when you are having list, your name is in blacklist country's name, your flag is blacklist, the insurance companies will not give insurance so easily to your cargo. They will say, first of all, you are choosing a ship of the country which is not maintaining ships. So we are also reluctant to give you insurance. And if you want insurance, the premium will be maybe 50%, 40% more. Okay. So such uh, things are there. Cargo also ships will not get. Everywhere there will be detentions, one after the other. So overall, overall view of the world will be deteriorated. Your flag will not be flying high. Okay. So that is what happens with the detentions. That's why countries are very, very maritime countries are very, very careful about maintenance of the ships and the maritime administrators are after the uh, ship owners to well maintain the ships and they are carrying out as many inspections as possible during 
whenever it is feasible during ships visits in mumbai um, in indian mm -hmm. ports okay so further let us see now see scenario before moving on to this next i will not show you that next slide i will keep it blank slide only okay so that you will not be busy reading those slides so uh, so excuse me i have a doubt just take one uh, example yes okay uh, sir as you said like uh, the port state uh, detains the ships uh, due to some uh, certain repairs been required as per the code so when they say that you need to repair that uh, for certain issues under 14 days as per the code and all so once they leave the port and they uh, overcome all these repairs and all they did it so the self uh, superintendent of that managing company or the owner visit the ship and they clarify it and they submit to the port state that whatever the detention has been given that be removed as they been cleared the all the problems what been showed in a detention yes that is correct so if uh, the deficiencies or defects are minor in nature they give mm -hmm. 14 days if okay. it is major in nature no time is given they say your ship will not sail okay that's end of no, it no 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 what i mean to say like uh, they have given a 14 days uh, like uh, once you have been sailed out from here you need to clear all this i mean the issues been there on board yes within But 14 it, days yeah yeah within 14 they clear clear it out and once they reach the next port they need to sub submit that list that they are detected that is required or okay. that country what they will do no that they will in come to next port that we have given so and so list so they are supposed to listen because these reports are available okay. internationally okay. on net okay so next export next port also that country's maritime administrator going to see that what defects the ship had and that inspection inspector okay the last so where the note okay you have rectified the defect without that will be detained that uh, so it is not in that we do with yes sir it is international uh, uh, doing anything india it is possible okay, okay. so yes, anyway so what we were discussing now is uh, without slide with a blank sum c scenario huh? each country now to ensure this port state control is done for the foreign flagship to see that ships are because if ships are not in good condition the foreign ships which are suppose we take the example of india india suppose foreign flag ships are coming into indian ports and during monsoon suppose one two three four ships are sinking in arabian sea so whose waters are getting polluted who is facing this problem definitely india only obviously is. indian indian, indian government and yeah. indian ports and indian environment and indian coast and indian Money. people finally yeah so why you should be not careful to have the ships seaworthy why you should not uh inspect the ships 100% and why you should allow the ships to come to your country if they are posing danger to your people your environment and your country so question is that okay but you have to do balance between two things like one is expenditure each and every ship to inspect it is very very difficult difficult and expensive also you have to keep so much manpower okay to inspect for inspection and so much amount of paperwork so much amount of reporting so that much infrastructure you may not be having and it may not be worth also so what they have done in europe okay they have seen this port state control they were doing countries are not able to inspect all the 100% ships and sometimes it is happening 
that ship has come from one country to other country and same ship is inspected again. But some ship by chance, she has visited maybe seven, eight countries, but not inspected at all. That is also possible because you did not have any system of exchanging any reports. Okay. Or you did not have any common understanding between the countries. So suppose countries have common understanding. Is it possible that suppose you and me, okay, you and me means any one student and myself. If we have common understanding that you inspect one ship, I will inspect other. So two ships are inspected, no? With 50% infrastructure. With 50% infrastructure, we have inspected. He has inspected one, I have inspected two. Suppose now you are now, let's say 50 students. And we say, okay, let us make this team of 50 students. 50 students, we will take it as 50 countries, different countries. And suppose each country inspects one, one ship. So you have inspected total how many? 50 ships. By how much infrastructure? Just having one inspector. 50 ships you have already inspected. And you share the report with each other that I have inspected so and so. I found like this, like this, like this. I have inspected, I have found like this, like this, like this. So each country not and it will be more effective and economical also. With lesser infrastructure, you are ensuring that almost all the ships are inspected either by me or by my faithful other country, my faithful other neighbor, neighboring countries, okay, or in that region countries. So with that, this is achieved. So this is number one, that Countries with lesser infrastructure, they can ensure with good cooperation, they can ensure that most of the ships are inspected and there are no substandard ships coming into the country. So this is number one. Number two, every time the ship goes into port, the ship staff, the seafarers have to face the inspections. So that is also, that can also can be avoided. So suppose one country you are inspected. So other countries, if they are having some cooperation, then other countries will not inspect me again and again for same work. So that way there will not be repetitive inspections of the ship. So for these two reasons, and third reason is, after these inspections, after this IMO, international conventions, compliance, and uh, seaworthy ships, as the port state controls were not able to inspect 100% ships, countries were not having sufficient this huge infrastructure to inspect all 100% ships. And still accidents were happening accidents were happening, marine disasters were increasing. So that is why in 1982, a group of countries came together in Europe and they said, let us join hands together and inspect as many number of ships together as possible by individual countries and each one of us, we are going to trust each other. We are going to believe each other. Like Italy, they inspect one ship and that report is available to all European countries. So other European countries also will say, okay, ship is inspected in Italy. We are not going to inspect it again because Italian company, whatever Italian government, whatever report is published, it is okay. Very good. So UK is inspecting one ship, same ship will not be inspected in Germany. Germany inspecting one ship, same ship will not be inspected in Netherlands. Netherlands inspecting one ship, same ship will not be inspected in Denmark, like that. Okay. And these reports are all shared with each other. And this understanding is called as memorandum of understanding, MOU. Okay. So uh, sometimes this question comes 
that write a note on port state control and MOU. So MOU, whatever I spoke before this, or everything you have to write like that. Okay. Then since 1982, various countries have agreed within certain areas in the world to cooperate. It's certain areas mean geographical areas which are close by or which are having common understanding or common uh, um, common belief in each other. So those countries came together and they decided that to cooperate, cooperate with post state control and have signed an agreement called as Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control, which is famously known as Port State Control MOU. Okay, now further, Port State Control MOU. The right to inspect the ships by Port State is laid down in the following conventions. So under which conventions they will inspect? The all conventions which have come by IMO. Okay. So main conventions, SOLAS, MARPOL, load line, STC, W, collision prevention, international tonnage, ILO's convention, MLC 2006. So all these conventions, they will have inspection of the ships. Okay. So these MOUs, let us see how they are formed and which was the first MOU which was formed. So first MOU which was formed was called as Paris MOU and so many countries became party to that MOU. MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. And it is not necessary that only geographically uh, close countries only join that MOU. So if countries believe each other, their systems of inspection, their system of working, their uh, faithfulness, their uh, uh, level of corruption, all such type of things are matching, then those countries all join hand together. Okay. So, Belgium, Bulgaria, Canada, see in Paris MOU, Canada is also party to Paris MOU. That means all these countries group of so many, they will inspect the ships, they will have their common website and they will share the inspection the reports. They will share all the available data to each other. So suppose a ship is coming from, suppose Canada and it is coming to Denmark. Next port is Denmark. One port is Canada, other port is Denmark. And suppose ship was inspected in Canada the report is already available with Denmark of the inspection. So in Denmark, if the report was clean, there was no major deficiency, there was only minor deficiencies, the Denmark people will not inspect the ship. So captain also knows, captain of the ship, owner also knows that my ship is not going to be inspected if I visit out of this, any country I visit, I will not be inspected again. Okay, understood? And how these inspections will be? If you have no deficiency at all, zero deficiency means zero defects, then one year you will not be inspected in Europe. Means from today's date till next one year, there no inspections will be there if you visit this Paris MOU countries. Your ship visits, no inspection will be there. Only after one year completion, next inspection will call you because your ship did not have a single defect. If you have certain defects, then after six months, you will be inspected in some other port. If minor defects are there, then ship will be inspected. Your ship will be inspected. Paris MOU, Tokyo MOU, Vina del Mar MOU, Caribbean MOU, Mediterranean MOU, I think India is one part here, but in each other. 
So that is why not many countries are having, because we don't have same frequency, same understanding, same level of corruption. There. So we don't, basically, we don't believe each other. We are not friendly nations with each other. So that is why, see, here, uh, which all countries? Eritrea, India, Iran, Kenya, Maldives Islands, Mauritius, Oman, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Sudan, Tanzania, Yemen. See, in this Indian Ocean MOU, you are having only one which is an advanced country or developed country is Australia. Other than that, all here, and you don't have here all the Gulf nations you don't have. Pakistan you have, don't have, which is neighboring country. Bangladesh, Bangladesh you, don't you, have. Don't have. you don't have. Then uh, Burma. Burma you don't have. Uh, then uh, Iran, yeah. Iraq, you, those uh, Iran are not there. Indonesia, Iran. Singapore. Indo Indonesia, that is not there. Malaysia is not there. So you don't believe each other. So either they don't believe you or you don't believe them. So, so suppose ship is coming from Pakistan, Karachi to India. Indian government also will inspect again if that is falling due. Because we don't know what Pakistan uh, government has inspected. That report is not shared with us. So we have to inspect again or vice versa. Indian port ship goes to Pakistan or Bangladesh. They will also inspect. So overall inspection uh, of many ships is not able to do. We are not able to do overall inspection of many ships. Only whatever infrastructure we have, that much only inspections we will carry because we are not having any cooperation whatsoever between nearby geographically located nearby countries. Okay. This is Abuja MOU, Black Sea MOU. And uh, you may ask, somebody may ask me that whether two countries can be in the two MOUs. Yes, possible. Why not? Like Australia is here also, and Australia is in Tokyo MOU also. See, Tokyo MOU, Australia, that's why I have made them blue here. So Australia is in two MOU. That means Australia, if several countries of this here and here, if you have inspected the ship, Australia also will be little easy with those ships for inspection. Okay. So that is how this MOU thing works and this is how the world picture sees how these MOUs are there on the geographical map with a color coding. Okay, This is India, see, uh, green color. So this country, Iran is one, here, here. So these only few countries and wherever you are having this shading, double shade, those countries are part of two MOUs. Okay, so this is your uh, South America, this is America, and this is Europe. Are Blue. these inspections charged? Yes, please. Inspections are, are inspections? not charged. No, no, they are not charged. They are actually, <laughs> actually, they are uh, not very much well. Because what happens, there is a lot of work when inspection comes. See, somebody comes to your house and he says, Show me everything. Open your cupboards, open your uh, wardrobes, open your clothes. Show me each and everything. Your bank books, bank account, balance, uh, kitchen, fridge, uh, washrooms, bathrooms, everything I want to see. So is it a pleasant uh, thing for your house? No. 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 So, so for ships, all the people Suppose in your family, at your house, one inspector comes and he says, I want to see whether you are living healthy condition, clean condition, hygienic condition, and uh, financially well condition, I want to inspect. So all the family members will be busy that day? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, to sir. show him. Yes. And whatever he's recording, you will try to tell him, no, 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 this is not correct. This is like this. This is like this. We are doing. So same thing happens with the ship. Entire team of the ship, they will have to work from morning to night. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, I have one question. It is that, sir, 
uh, although uh, india has a very good diplomatic relationship with uh, uh, japan canada australia, uh, australia america but uh, during its uh, shipping mou he, india has done mou uh, mou with uh, certain of the african countries so why india cannot uh, no it is uh, not question it. that no 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 it is not question that india has the name mou india yeah. has become part of indian ocean mo mou and other country joined there so it is okay. not that uh, they are doing anything with india but uh, suppose you go to europe and say i want to be part of your group okay yeah, yeah. okay so they will say yes, no sir. you cannot be part of our group because you are, you don't have your corruption level is very high okay we don't believe your inspections okay understanding yeah but but sir it incur yes, no? very yes yes sir but sir it incur very large amount of unnecessary times in terms of inspection and all these things and uh, shipping yes, time, but you uh, have no choice no you have no choice because of your see that is why you have to come up to uh, some level which is acceptable level internationally you have to prove yourself that your country is corruption free and your inspections are comparable to other countries following the rule of the land which you are not able to yes please okay. following the rule of the land yes no, but that is the, you are not able to do that no because they uh, all these things are recorded internationally no okay so okay, this is how the mou thing works all over the world and how the world looks at you if, if, if india has if india is in uh, if india is in mou with sri lanka and if there is still some defect in the vessel while while they are getting in in sri lanka so they will send out ship or not no it is not it is not that if you see it is not india is uh, with no uh, see sri lanka has joined that group india has joined that group and saying that okay and then the, all these countries they will suppose now new country wants to come in to all countries care or not okay if i am in that mou then i will not create any problem for you no it is not like that but i will respect your inspection reports okay and you will share with me so this mou reports are shared by the country to country okay on same platform okay so this is how it looks uh, the thing this sort of uh, data is available on net also that port set control mou data so which are say this flag so belize country whichever ships are surface yes us is blacklisting many of them okay see panama is also under blacklist of us then uh, north korea is on blacklist of uh, tokyo uh, we are online class hai na uska wohi kar raha yes so this is just for uh, your reference it is not hard and fast because this is changing year by year okay just to show you that this type of charts are available so that's why we are sharing this chart okay for that let's see okay limited shipping and just uh, read this scenario i will read it for you so you will also read with me the ship's name is mt voyager okay ship is built in korea okay owner is greek so owner of this manufactured but in shipping term it is built in korea manning company who is providing crew for the ship is hong kong based company hong kong technical management who is running the ship technical in singapore technical management is in singapore ship is having indian 
master and officers are indian junior officers are from bangladesh ukraine croatia sri lanka and crew is from philippines so crew people are from philippines okay classification under which ship is built and ship is running and updating her maintenance is american bureau of shipping that is based in america port of registry of ship is panama so you know now all these things you know now that's why i have brought this slide now so port of registry is panama so flag of the ship is panamian flag and countries whose rules and regulations which ship has to comply with our panama vessel is alongside in algeciras spain so ship is in port of algeciras in spain okay so with all the above information what is the flag of the ship who is flag state control and who is port state control so this is answer you have to give Flag is also Panama, and PSC is Algeciras. Yes. So flag is Panama, sir. Yes, Panama is the flag of the ship. Who is flag state control? Who who child this is? Who has to take care of this child? Panama. Anywhere Panama. in the part of world. Okay, Panama. Control with this story. कॉम्प्लिकेटेड business this merchant navy is complicated business it's very very complicated okay and that is why you must have one common platform where these rules regulations are made that is imo and this whatever imo makes has to be implemented and complied with by the governments individual governments by bringing out legislations or the rules and implement it on their flagships and also foreign flagships okay so with this we have almost uh, completing this port state control flag state control and now i will just for test yourself i will give you one more exercise okay not here not here Okay. Let's see. I will do quick drawing. Just uh, bear with me because uh, I am just drawing with. Uh, wait. I am just drawing with my mouse only. Okay. So you will have to just bear with me. okay so i did not say that uh, which country is this or 
Does it look like India, India country? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay, definitely. Then uh, this uh, down below island is Sri Lanka island. Sri Lanka. Yes, yes. yes sir. So ship A, we will say. Okay, ship A, we will say this is a, a Singapore flagship. S N G. I will write for Singapore. Sorry, इतना बड़ा बड़ा आ जाता है नहीं ठीक है. Now this ship I will say as uh, Sri Lanka. S R L I will say Sri Lanka. Hmm. Sri Lanka flag. And ship C we will take it as Indian. I N D. Okay. Now you have to tell me who can inspect. Who all can inspect ship B? Who can inspect? All three. Uh, Indian, the three. Both Indian. Indian Ocean M O U. Uh, the countries in the Indian Indian no, no, Ocean no, no, M O U. No, 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 no. Then uh, that M O U thing you have not understood correctly. Uh, first of all, ship B is in which jurisdiction? Jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Now it's in India, so Indian uh, uh, can visit it since it is a uh, Sri Lankan flag, so it is port state for uh, like for this vessel. And if she goes to Sri Lanka, then it will be flag state. Uh, okay. Of Sri Lanka. okay, okay, okay. Thank you. I will now clarify. Uh, you have uh, done your attempts, so answers are correct. Uh, answers are a little bit require correction also, whatever. So ship B is in jurisdiction of Indian territory. Okay, because ship B is in Indian port, suppose we say, then ship B, yes, by international regulation, ship B can be inspected by Indian Maritime Administration under port state control. So DG shipping the inspector can very well go to ship B just to see her condition. Okay, and inspect. Okay, now ship B is registered in Sri Lanka, so. Sri Lankan suppose Sri Lankan यहाँ से suppose Sri Lankan inspector can fly to India and board the ship possible. So this is under which authority? Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan. हाँ no, this is flag state. No हाँ yes flag state. So he will be inspecting under flag state because yeah. that is उसका बच्चा किसका है? बच्चा Sri Lankan है ना? तो श्रीलंकन है तो उसको तो उसके माँ बाप तो देखेगा ही देखेगा उसको दे कैन इंस्पेक्ट द शिप एनी वेयर इन दर्ल्ड वेर एज ओके ओके लेट एस सी नाउ सिंगापुर दिस सिंगापुर शिप इज देयर सिंगापुर शिप इज कमिंग टू मुंबई ओके ये शिप मुंबई में आया अगेन हु कैन इंस्पेक्ट द शिप Indian state. Indian, Indian. Yes. So Indian government can inspect the ship under port state control, and Singapore government also can inspect the ship under flag state control by coming to India. They can take permission from India and they can come and inspect the ship. Okay, yeah. because that is their duty obligation. Hey, on paper. Okay. So this is one scenario. Now Indian ship is in Sri Lanka. Okay, now who can inspect this ship? See, Sri Lankan port state and Indian flag state. Yes, Sri Lankan port state and Indian flag state. Okay, okay. Now this. Okay, I will change the color now of this. Let us see. One inspector had come flown from Singapore, and he has come here to Singapore flag. ship he has inspected this okay now this singapore flagship next port is sri lanka next port is sri lanka okay so can sri lankan government send this same inspector here yahan se yahan bhej sakta hai kya no need to form kara ga no need sir because they are sharing same mou you know indian ocean mou no no no, no. Yeah, mou you do not get confused with mou this is no, no, they, thing to do they with cannot, they cannot send but definitely they can stop the vessel before boarding and inspect before actually they you know uh, start yeah. the operations yeah see just because ship is going to this 
a ship is going to visit uh, your a ship is going to visit sri lanka next port so that doesn't mean they can come to india and inspect this ship no that rights are not given to them if ship goes to their country they can inspect not otherwise understood can i samjha nahi 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 samjha samjha na sir what is yeah okay okay now this uh, suppose this one inspector has come from uh, singapore can he can he go to this indian ship and inspect in sri lanka indian ship singapore inspector can he no no not allowed no sir no sir he got nothing to do with that ship no because see yes, country sir. kiska hai sri lanka country ship kiska yes, indian sir. ship to so, sri lanka yahan se kahan singapore yahan kahan se aaya so singapore ka koi hisab hi nahi hai idhar okay yes, so it happens and what you uh, uh, students are getting confused with mou okay now i will make that clear to you what is mou okay now suppose sri lanka is party to mou that i uh, indian ocean mou okay indian ocean mou i o okay now suppose this ship has singapore ship had come from sri lanka pehla sri lanka tha then she has come to mumbai sri lankan ship uh, this singapore ship okay and ship was inspected at sri lanka by sri lankan authorities will this ship be inspected again in mumbai yes, no not yes, required yes, sir answer is not required they can inspect but not required because sri lanka has already inspected that ship sri lanka is in indian ocean mou sri lanka's report you are having with you unless somebody complain is there some specific reason is there there is no need to inspect yeah, yeah. again yeah, yeah. because you don't have such you don't have luxury of such manpower ke itne inspector hai sab ship mein bhejte raho itna nahi hai so to have this operation indian psc yes please indian nahi nahi aapka your voice is not coming clear but uh, you are saying that indian port state control can inspect yes can inspect correct but if it is inspected by your mou country you need to inspect again and waste your time okay excuse but, me sir excuse but sir. if you <coughs> yes please sajjan ko uh, sir yeah sir i i want to ask that sir, suppose uh, one of the ship has already been inspected from one of the countries in africa which has a mou with india Yes, but sir, when when the same ship come from uh, that particular state, which is uh, that particular country, which is uh, almost uh, disturbing country in India, then sir, how go uh, Indian government will not inspect all these ship which has comes from all these African countries? Because there is a chance that sir, uh, because of all it, it's a disturbing influence, it there will maybe chance that uh, the ship contains some illegal things. Yes. So, if you have some reason with you to inspect again, you can inspect. There is no problem. They are not stopping you from inspection. And the next thing is, sir. Yeah. And next thing is that, sir. Why Indian government has done MOU with all these uh, the African countries? Because, sir, they are all uh, they are heavily disturbed with some illegal works or illegal things. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. See, when you are suppose Indian Ocean MOU. so you are along with 10 different countries and suppose yeah. you want membership suppose africa has applied for membership in ioa indian ocean mou so suppose out of 10 countries suppose nine countries has said yes so where the india stands either you should have muscle power you should have money power or you should be leader to have voting with you understand or not understand yeah yes yeah, sir i ah, so international scenario many such type of things are happening so uh, you cannot uh, differentiate uh, like that and if you can differentiate and if you are powerful country like us us can do anything us can uh, change all us china they can uh, do anything but sir indian uh, sometimes indian government have to face some uh, price in terms of uh, having mou yes, with so, all the so 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 whenever countries. whenever such meetings are taking place between the countries these yes. mou countries they point out this 
that so and so thing we have seen you you had inspected the ship and those government also take uh, corrective action no sir i think okay. mr sajal is talking about illegal i mean yes, yes. illegal things are not a job of psc right so it will be customs yes. who will take care of that yes, so yes, that yes. is not of our concern and as far as uh, african psc is concerned they are equally good i mean there is nothing wrong yes with yes that. yes okay 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 yes. i got it okay i will just uh, give clarification on that see illegal things doing like smuggling doing and safety yeah. of the ship are two different matters all together these inspections are only for safety of the ship environment and people okay sir okay okay yeah. illegal things anybody can inspect anybody can check those those illegal matter is going to different authority all together illegal matter is going to po your coast guard navy police it is not okay. uh, many times it may not come to dg shipping okay 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 yeah. so thank you so much and i hope that you have understood the concept because uh, many times this question is also hot question port set control flag set control their duties inspection what is port set control what is mou what you when you are inspecting ships what you achieve by doing mou so such questions are coming very regularly okay so uh, you must prepare all these topics whatever we have covered within our four first four lectures they are very very important okay so let us go to next topic so till the time i change the slide you can take a deep and <laughs> you can prepare for understanding next topic okay so understanding next topic let us see which is that next topic and next topic is waiting of the ships this is the next topic and first uh, just before uh, i have just made it a powerpoint presentation but i did not share the new slide i have to do that then only this will come are you there with me now with the same slide which i am seeing yes sir yes sir okay yes sir so okay so ship waiting ye pehla what is this concept and what it is let us understand that okay once you understand the concept then you will be able to understand the topic and what it is and how it is done very easily and what why the requirement is there okay so let us take the case of your own day to day basis uh, life which everybody many of us are facing see you are going to your office and from your home you want to go to railway station nearest railway station why i take this example because many of you must be from mumbai but boys who are or girls who are not from mumbai so just appreciate that uh, you are going to bus stand or you are going to railway station by taking auto or you are taking auto to your office who are uh, staying in small town small uh, um, cities you are taking auto directly to your office or taxi to your office okay time of your going to office is same every day barring maybe few times so every day you want to travel say time is 8:30 or 10 o'clock or 9:30 let us take 9:30 so time of your leaving home is 9:30 every day you are taking auto auto or taxi to go to your destination every day so every day taking a new auto new taxi so suppose one taxi or one auto you find it in good condition which you have used for three four times you found it in good condition the driver is also okay he is also neat and clean the condition of auto is very good the meter also does not run fast and he always use this meter and he speaks he is having some maybe some mild music in his uh, auto it is uh, very clean and neat and fine good condition 
so you may or you will most of the time you will ask him what is your phone number or, or when you are bringing this auto here can you pick me every day can you pick me up every day at 8 30 i would like to travel by your auto okay so which many of us we are doing that why you why did you do that all the autos are there all the taxis which are there on the road which are available aren't they approved by government aren't they are having the valid licenses which are issued by government are they are not are these vehicles are not going to rto every year for passing and passing the safety and security test are these licenses of these drivers auto rickshaw drivers are not uh, renewed from time to time or these auto rickshaws are not inspected by rto at every signal or no nook and corner so in spite of that you find that one auto rickshaw or one taxi is good for you because he is punctual, he is clean, he is wearing good uniform, he is playing music, his auto rickshaw is in good condition, and uh, list can go endless. So, if all the auto rickshaws on the road are approved by government, if all the auto rickshaws are having the valid documents, including your RC book, registration book, insurance, the permit for the driver, then driver wearing uniform, first aid box in auto, driver's valid license, all such type of things are there. Then all the auto rickshaw is having all the lights and the uh, regulation requirement, headlight, tail lights, horn, everything you have. Then why choose from 100 auto rickshaws, only one auto rickshaw or two auto rickshaws. To save time. Only to save time? Do you think like No, that? sir. It, no, sir. It is because of his, his punctuality. Apart from that, he is regular. Uh, every day he is regular uh, for his... Uh, uh, and he is uh, really uh, his speciality. Uh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. For personal satisfaction. Uh, it, 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 is, it is my requirement and he fulfills my requirement. Yes. My teacher. Okay. So we have means, not known all the auto rickshaw persons. Uh, yes. Personally, that. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Other one question. day we might have a bad experience, but that doesn't mean that that person is not punctual. Or... Okay. Sir, okay. Just now, me. Yes, just now mute everybody. Hey. Mute everybody. Okay. I will give you another scenario. If there is an auto rickshaw stand, and there are ten auto rickshaws. And still, you don't want to take the number one auto rickshaw because number one auto rickshaw condition is not good. You find that it is all tone, seat is tone, the driver is shabby, his uh, you know, uh, the buttons are open on top, he's thinking with tobacco, he's spitting here and there. So, what you will do, you will wait till his number goes away. And suppose then fourth auto rickshaw is looking good. It is new, it is well maintained, good driver. You will wait at the fourth auto rickshaw uh, number and you will take that auto rickshaw. Why? This type of things mostly girls do it. Even boys also yeah. do, but girls yeah, do it. Sure safety. Sir, it, it yes. is because of so, his service why? level. Sir, it is but, because of his I'm, service level. I am asking, see, now we have seen hey, 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 hey. On, okay. own preferences. Yes. Okay. So, ek, ek pahila to, uh, let me explain you. You have seen now registry of ships. So, registry government karta hai. Government is ensuring that ships are in good condition. Government is ensuring ships are all having all valid documents, all certificates, the crew is trained, they are having license. Everything government is doing. Then why such choosiness? Like you are we are taking auto rickshaw. So auto rickshaw pata hona chahiye ki uske paas pahla to la permit hona chahiye. Permit hai. RC book hona chahiye. Pollution under control hona chahiye. 
इंश्योरेंस होना चाहिए थर्ड थर्ड पार्टी इंश्योरेंस ही शुड बी वेरिंग यूनिफॉर्म देन ही शुड बी हैविंग दैट बैच ही शुड बी हैविंग वैलिड लाइसेंस ऑल दिस थिंग उसके पास सारा चीज है एंड एवरी ईयर ही इज टेकिंग ऑटो रिक्शा टू आर टी ओ ऑफिस फॉर इंस्पेक्शन एंड गवर्नमेंट हैज सर्टिफाइड दैट इज ऑटो रिक्शा इज फिट to go on road and transport passengers as per capacity and it is safe for the people so why then choosiness why you want to choose so because that is uh, that auto rickshaw is personally vetted by us apart yes, from all this right yes so you are having over and above government's uh, this norms you are having some more norms which will make your life comfortable which will make your life safe more safe you may be having different comfort level with that services whatever he is providing you sir uh, we can say that sir it is because of its excellent service level which uh, which will help to delight his customer and because yes. of this customer will choose this particular service yes abhi abhi okay one more one more thing i will ask you do you think all auto rickshaws licenses are valid which are on the road Do you no, think sir, no. no no absolutely not sir yes no. big no okay okay yeah. big no all the auto rickshaws are having valid insurance cover do you think like no. that no no sir, sir no okay yeah. all the auto rickshaws are in same condition like a uh, uh, upholstery uh, uh, non tampered meter all this is possible no, no sir. sir no then that means when they are on the road government fails to provide you these services yes or no answer my question yes or no yes yes sir yes, yes. Sir. okay so just now we were discussing about mous so other countries don't believe you because your your government is not able to provide the people their citizens the services what they should be providing so that is why such auto rickshaws or such service providers are available in market who are not valid so same thing goes with the ships also possibility that ships also may not be plying with whatever they are required although they may have all the certificates in place they may have all things okay okay government has approved them government is not oh, indian government only various countries it may be panama it may be um, singapore it may be hong kong it may be uh, uh, some uh, marshall island any any other thing so still ships can have defects still ship may not have insurance ships may not be having although you are having port state control flag state control inspection regime everything is there but still there is a possibility that you those are not sufficient for you those whatever insurance is done by the uh, governments is not sufficient for you and you want to ensure total safety for your cargo for obvious 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 reasons obvious reasons that you want to have total safety for your cargo okay because cargo is very very important to you the promptness is very very important to you as in same manner you are going to office is very important to you so you want to have one or two or three auto rickshaws which you have identified that they can do your this work very very yes. safely comfortably as well as without any hassle and time bound without any problems okay sir like yes please uh, sir uh, you are saying all these things i i, I want to ask you that sir sir um, sometimes we have seen that many of the developed countries uh, where uh, we have seen many accidents happen in uh, all those ships which which are fully certified from uh, various developed countries so sir you are saying that uh, uh, many countries are uh, on paper they are approving all these things and they are not following the uh, norms but uh, many a times even all the ships which belongs to developed country also they they have to face many accident you can say so how we can sir uh, how we can improve all these things in order to ensure that 
uh, that uh, the SIP which which was taken granted from all the those developed okay. countries are in okay. safe condition. Okay. Okay. When accident is a different case altogether. Accident, uh, any vehicle, any uh, a ship can get involved with accident because accident is finally that word itself is accident only. No. So on the road also yes, a very good brand new car also can uh, meet with accident. No. It may be. Uh, uh, it may be fault of others, it may be fault of the vehicle, it may be fault of the road, it may be fault of maybe a dog crossing the road, it may be child crossing the road, it can be anything. Okay, so that accident case is totally different. But uh, getting involved in accident, so what you do because of the ships for this thing not maintain good condition over and above such inspections of port state control, flag state control, if I want to have something more than that, yes, why not? So when cargo is very, very important, like oil cargo, oil cargo, when huge cargo is carried, oil cargo is important to me. Important to me means it is a huge value cargo as well as it, if accident takes place, this cargo can damage environment in such a manner that the cost of cleaning will wipe out my entire uh, company. So if such scenarios are there, or it can wipe out my uh, total business, when such scenario is there, then you should be choosing from the market. So when you are coming for choosing from the market, so suppose if I can, I can say that, okay, I will be only boarding only brand new auto rickshaws, new auto rickshaws, which are looking good and which are just one year old, two years old, condition is very good. The driver is uh, not uh, wearing dirty uniform, he is not eating tobacco, he is not drunk, he is not slept, such auto rickshaws I will not take. Will you do it or not? Yes, sir. Yes. So same thing, ships also means cargo people also started doing after certain things. And this type of requirements is called as ship waiting. So I will prefer, I will put my requirements and I will send one inspector on ship. And if you want to hire that ship, then you get it waited. Then I will take your ship. Otherwise I will not take your ship. Okay. As simple as that. So to make my cargo and my business more safe, I will do that. And this started with tankers after the big pollution caused by one accident that we, we are going to discuss. And this came out as ship waiting. Waiting is the word which is used for careful inspection to find out various faults, okay? So we will proceed to number two slide. Let us see. Still about two minutes are there. I will not leave you a little early also. So see now how the things are. Okay. So this background, every time whenever you are answering any question, no, there's some background you have to give. And this is the background for ship waiting. See, the boom of shipping in the late 60s and 70s resulted in presence of many ships and ship owners. So as we have seen, shipping developed after Second World War. Many countries got uh, independence and shipping started uh, developing more and ship numbers increased, the capacities increased, types of ships increased. Okay? So the ship owners and number of ships. The recession in the late 70s and 80s led to many such owners taking measures for their survival. So this sentence means what? So any ship owner purchasing ship as a business, he wants to earn maximum profit. He doesn't want to earn losses and just go down, go down, go down. So he wants to earn profit. So when he will earn more and more profit, maximum profit, when his expenditures are limited and if he does not spend a single paisa, that is the best scenario for businessmen. Don't spend anything and earn profit, earn profit, earn profit. So, so this is survival means to remain in industry during the low demand of the ships. They started saving their money. 
So what they will do? Reduce cost on maintenance, reduce cost on manning. Okay. So everywhere keep on reducing. Suppose some repair is required, they will say, oh, we will do it after six months because I don't have money. I don't want to spend. I'm not making any profit. So that means ship's condition is going down, down, down. Okay. Non-availability of appropriate trained personnel. So this is also one of the factor. You see worldwide, the trained seafarers, non-availability of them and good people with good attitude. Okay, resulted in badly operated or managed ships. So this has resulted in not poorly maintained ships and badly operated managed ships. Size of tankers also increased, VLCC, ULCC. The number of accidents or accidents also increase. Okay, incidents and accidents also increase during 70s, 80s. And once the accident increase, means your cargo is also going down. The people are losing their lives. And when cargo goes down and the cargo owners are suffering, the people who are purchasing cargo, they are suffering. So they said, why not have a good ships for certain type of business? And that is, they started saying that need for waiting failed by oil majors. Now, who is this oil major? We will just discuss oil major and stop it here. Okay, just have patience a little bit, just two minutes. Oil majors are the companies who are producing oil and selling oil. So those companies are called as oil majors. Okay, so worldwide, there are many big companies who are extracting oil from Mother Earth and selling it to other countries. And barring few countries, maybe 20 odd countries who are producing oil and exporting, all other countries have to import oil. And these oil majors are, we can name few, like Mobil is there, uh, SO is there, Total is there, Aramco is there. Aramco. Yes, so these are oil majors. Absolutely. Okay. But our IOC, HPC, they are not called as oil majors because those are only refining companies. They are not producing oil. ONGC is also not called as oil major because ONGC is producing oil, but to very, very small extent. Very small extent. Okay. But these companies are producing very huge oil. Okay. And they are called oil majors. So they said, we must start choosing tankers. Okay. So tankers must be acceptable standards. So make some standards over and above the industry, whatever certification is there and inspect the tankers. From here, we will do in our next lecture because any amount I teach, it is uh, still less. So we will wait here only and we will open the forum for question answers if anything is there. Otherwise, we will say a bye. Okay. So thank you so much, students, for patiently listening to me and uh, taking this knowledge of uh, uh, current shipping environment. Although name is current shipping environment, but these are all different different subjects by itself in this uh, under this banner of current shipping environment. Okay. So thank you so much. Anything somebody wants to speak, no problem. I am here, and uh, whoever has finished, they can leave. No, no problem now. I am not going to discuss anything new, but some topics uh, in case somebody is having something, come up, please. Excuse me, sir. Sir, you, you said that ONGC is not a oil producing companies. So no, no, in no, the no, same. No, 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 no. I, uh, correction. Sir. I did not say ONGC is not oil producing. ONGC yes, produces sir. oil, but the amount is very small. Okay. Compared uh, so, to. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Oh, so we, can we say that, sir, in the same manner, China Petroleum is also not an oil producing countries. It, it is only extracting oil from some other countries. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, like ONGC, China Petroleum is also the same uh, company. It is not <coughs> producing oil. Uh, it is uh, only refining the oil. Uh, so refining oil are not oil majors. They are not called oil majors. Oil majors are only uh, uh, producing country, producing companies, okay. large producing companies and exporting companies across the world. Okay, okay sir. Okay. okay.
Sir. Yes, please. Sir, while inspecting, the inspector concentrated on, concentrates on which things in the results mainly. I could not get your question. Sir, inspectors who are inspecting the vessels. Yes. On which areas they will more concentrate on inspection while inspecting the vessel? Uh, each uh, inspection or each oil company, oil majors, they will have their own checklist. More or less it will be same, same. But mostly they no. will be... Uh, any vessel, sir. Any vessel. Bulk carrier, any vessel. Yes, yeah, safety, safety of the ship. Miss, see, what I want to inspect that ship should reach from point A to point B safely with my cargo. Okay, and for that, whatever I want to inspect, I will inspect. So, construction of the ship, strength of the ship, uh, maintenance of the ship, manning of the ship, management of the ship, everything I will then operation of the maintenance schedules, everything I will inspect. And sir, can. Okay, we will we will discuss this ship waiting. No, then you ask me this question at the end. And sir, I have a doubt. Sir, can, can I just clarify? I mean, uh, this waiting is only related to tankers, if I'm not wrong, because it's only related to the oil cargo related. Uh, no, now waiting is gone to even bulk carriers also mainly, and even for container vessels also possible. So it is spread over to bulk carriers definitely now. Okay, and this is been related to I mean, uh, basis of time charter and spot charter also, no sir. No, anybody. So suppose if I am strong in the industry and if I say I will use only uh, ships which are five years old, so who can stop me? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean like, uh, like if an oil major doing a wetting for a particular ship, like a brand new and they're taking it for a time charter of 10 years or span of a year. Hmm. So they're going to do a wetting in a, every like intervals, right? Yes, yes. They will issue certificate which is valid for a certain uh, number of certain months period of or time. period. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We are going to discuss that. Uh, sir, uh, sir, do we have a checklist that you have mentioned that uh, in order to inspect our ship, yes, we have yes, a yes. various yes. parameter through which? Yes. Checklists so are available uh, on, that also. on that also. On that also. Checklists are available. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay, so if nothing more, then I will say bye. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, yes, sir. I think next lecture is not there in September, only in October. So big gaps, actually, you also uh, remain away from the subject. So do not uh, allow it to happen. Uh, in between, keep on brushing up. So that you know, uh, you are not coming to lecture uh, without uh, this thing, you know, uh, or forgotten background. So keep in touch. Okay. So yes, thank sir. you so much and bye bye. Thank, thank you, sir. 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 Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Yes, sir. Bye, sir. Take care. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat>